world. I have become Jacob, my brother. These, my small plates, take write sacred teachings and precious prophecies on them. You will. Then I am a prophet? Much work to... <coughs> Excuse me. There is much work to do to bring the people unto Christ. You must confront the people and tell them not to rebel or provoke God, or sin will forever dominate their destiny. And now, I address the new king of the Nephites. I anoint you to rule these people in my place. When I am gone, you will be the new king. The people love you, Nephi. You've been their great protector, wielding the sword of Laban in their defense and always looking after them. We'll call all of our kings Nephi after you from now on. Uh, okay. Here, uh, Nephi, these large plates hold the history of our people. Write on these for generations to come. Farewell, until we meet again. Nephi has died, and it looks like things have gotten a little wild. Jacob's got his work cut out for him. Ah, uh, what should I do? What should I teach them? I'm so worried for their souls. How can I get them to repent? What would Nephi do? Maybe they'll just stop on their own. Maybe God won't mind if I keep my mouth shut. Oh, no. It's my job to help them repent. My beloved people, up until recently, you've been pretty righteous. Yeah, we're pretty awesome. But God has shown me the wickedness growing in your hearts. First of all, you've been ungrateful and obsessed with seeking for riches. Don't you know that gold and riches will never satisfy your souls? You think you're better than others if you have more stuff? Oh, don't compare and compete. Cease your vanity. But bless one another with the gifts that God gives you. Seek first the kingdom of God and righteousness, then pursue riches with the intent to do good to others. And that's all I have to say about that. Unfortunately, I have to talk to you about something even grosser. Now, Jacob's compassion for the women and children in the crowd make him hesitant to bring up a grosser sin that's happening among the people. You see, some of the men let their minds stray after their lusts, and it's causing a lot of pain to their families. God has decreed his pattern of marriage. One wife and nobody else. You're breaking the hearts of your wives and losing your children's trust and respect. Not so fast. What's good for King Solomon and King David is good enough for us, am I right? You're making excuses so that you can do what you want. Any exceptions must be declared by the Lord and for His purposes. If you persist in these things, God's judgments will speedily come upon you. We're God's chosen people. We're simply doing what some of our kings have done. It's not as if we're wild and sinful like the Lamanites. Huh? <laughs> they don't even wear ties. Your sins are greater than our brothers, the Lamanites. They love their wives and children, and because of this, they are better off than you. God will be merciful to them, and one day, they will become a blessed people. But you, awake! <laughs> it's like you're in a slumber. The devil wants you in the lake of fire and brimstone. Yes, the Nephites forgot that you can't find true treasure outside of God's law. And we can see this kind of forgetfulness in our world today. But I'm just living my truth. The Spirit doesn't lie, but speaks the truth about things as they really are, and not as we say they are. Ah, uh, if God could just realize how demanding the world is. Look, I told him what I needed. 
Instead of giving advice to the Lord, maybe we should get His advice. After all, He created the world. Jesus descended below all things so He knows just how to help us. He'll teach us wisdom, show us our weaknesses, and give us the power to do what we really need to do. Of course, it takes faith to trust that what will make us truly happy is God's will. But remember that God doesn't want us to do things His way because He's a big meanie. He loves us. And so does Jacob. Because even as he's calling people to repentance, Jacob calls them beloved, like four times. Beloved, be reconciled unto God through the atonement of Christ and obtain a hope of glory in Him. Jacob has such hope for his people and for us that he's about to tell one of the most amazing stories in the Book of Mormon. Next episode, Into the Olive Grove we go. Did you know that Living Scripture Streaming, kind of like Netflix for LDS families, provides the funds to create these line-upon-line -line cartoons? Every subscription helps make them possible. And did you know Living Scripture Streaming has Sunday mode? Now, most of us like a nice Sunday nap, right? Mom, can we binge some Netflix? Well, Living Scripture Streaming Sunday Mode enables only spiritually uplifting shows, so you can truly enjoy your day of rest. We hope this presentation has helped to bring you a little closer to Jesus Christ. Now it's your turn to study and continue to learn line upon line. So go read your scriptures.